Okay, so we just saw how to use the USD API programmatically. Next, we'll look at the ASCII file format. USD is file format agnostic, but the ASCII format is worth special mention because it's human readable and because production users tend to prefer it for convenience. It's also very helpful for debugging. So here, we'll take a look at a very simple example uh, USD ASCII layer. We'll see it starts with the version number, followed by optional metadata for the layer itself. So here we've said this layer was authored at 24 frames per second and given it a doc string. We can add comments anywhere we like in the file, as seen here. And we can define primitives with the keyword def. We can also define classes and overrides. In this case, I've defined a transform of type xform with the name object xf, and it inherits from some class. Primitives can also have attributes. So here we have type transform with the name lowercase t transform set to identity matrix, and it can have child primitives. So here we have another definition, in this case, a subdiv with the name object subd, and we've omitted the edit the metadata in this case. It has an attribute called float attribute with metadata hidden equals true and we haven't specified a value for this. This is intentionally optional so that downstream departments can specify values and upstream departments can specify definitions. So as we see here there are a couple type names here that are kind of special xform and subdiv and so USD has explicit schema to define what attributes those types of objects should have. So the core USD schema has been inspired by RenderMan, Alembic, Katana, and Presto, our internal an animation system. We wanted to make sure that the schema we provide is compatible with industry standards and internally compatible as well. So as you'd expect, we have transform, subdivs, curves, all those kind of RenderMan-y primitives that you'd expect. We have shaders, bindings, and their parameters. What you might not expect is we have the notion of models and model hierarchy, such as props and sets. This is important when, when choosing how to load or unload and manage complexity. You can also create custom schema or, def or extend existing definitions. And so in the past, in production, when production users wanted to, to define new schemas, they would write C++ code. We quickly realized that that was fairly mechanical, so we gave them macros to help make that easier. And then during the USD project, we realized it became, it was so mechanical that there's no need to write C++ at all. And instead, wouldn't it be nice if you could just define it as USD ASCII, because really that's what you're talking about anyway. So in USD, that's exactly how it's done. You define an ASCII layer. Here we see we're using USDA again. And in this case, we use the keyword class and we give it a name geometry schema. That's the name that'll come out in C++. Here we say it inherits from visible schema and all geometry schema have an extent. Next, we see we've defined a cube, cube schema, and it inherits from geometry schema. And we've given it some documentation. We've also defined an attribute called size, which by default is 1.0 and given that some documentation. And so this source file is run through a code generator and C++ classes come out, as well as Doxygen documentation. So here we see USD cube schema. This is the C++ class that was generated. We see the inheritance structure that was declared in ASCII is preserved in C++. And our documentation comes through as Doxygen documentation. And here, the attribute size manifests as get size and set size. And we see the C++ type double has been used. Next, we'll see that the Python bindings have been generated as well. And the help strings preserve the documentation that was specified in the ASCII file. Here, we see the inheritance structure again, and the attribute mutators and getters and setters that were declared in C++. So 